quite extraordinary gambit, really, by Keir Starmer to put his entire career on the line on whether or not he gets fined, uh, of course. Uh, now, I would suggest a bit of this is, of course, to draw uh, contrast with the Prime Minister, who's already been issued with a £50 fine uh, for having a birthday cake in the Cabinet Room, uh, and uh, along with quite a few other his colleagues, including the, the, the Chancellor, and has not offered his resignation. Annas, can I come to you first? Cute politics or bang to the inevitable? Look, I think Keir Starmer is, is a man of integrity, a, a man of principle. And one of the things you've seen throughout this entire scandal is Boris Johnson and the Conservative Party trying to portray that every politician is the same, every political party is the same, and trying to turn it into a frustration with the political establishment and the political system. And I think it's really important to stress I don't even think Boris Johnson is the same as his Conservative colleagues, never mind other politicians. And clearly we can expect a different kind of uh, incumbent of Downing Street in terms of Boris Johnson and a different kind of politics than what we have just now. But I think that honesty, integrity, decency is important at the heart of our politics and the, at the heart of Downing Street. And I think Keir Starmer recognises that. OK, it, it did take three whole days for that honesty, integrity and decency to come to the service. Why didn't he say this on Friday? Look, I think, I think clearly from Keir's perspective, he doesn't believe he's broken any rules. This is something that Durham police have looked at before and found no case uh, to answer. Uh, and he's always said he's willing and open to answer any and all questions. Uh, but it is one of those issues that's kept going on and on and on around what will you do in X or Y or Z scenario. He's drawn a line under that um, and let him answer those questions, let Durham police uh, come forward with their uh, findings. And I think you can see quite clearly a contrast between Boris Johnson, the man, and Keir Starmer, the man. Harry, this has put a bit of pressure on Boris Johnson, hasn't it? Boris Johnson has patently not resigned. The accusation, obviously, that he's not an honest man. Absolutely, but I mean, if you compare to where we were uh, two weeks ago, this was a uh, party gate, party gate, party gate was a, was a singly headache for Boris Johnson and the government. The only person that's made this, broaden this out, really, I think, is Keir Starmer. Because he went for that low-hanging fruit of Rishi Sunak and said, Rishi Sunak, for inadvertently walking to a meeting five minutes early, got fined by the police and therefore he should resign. I think a lot of people, quite fairly, went, hold on a minute, if that is the new bar for, for resignation, then what about your own behaviour? Now, look... Yeah, but on to but, Boris Johnson, though. Boris John it, it does yeah, make him more let, uncomfortable. Yeah, perhaps, of course it? it is. You can see why Tory ministers are, are not calling for, not calling for, um, not calling for, for Keir Starmer to resign. But the idea this is some sort of tactical, brilliant move by Keir Starmer to pin it all back on the Prime Minister is, I think, a little bit of cute spin. Actually, he's in a corner, in a corner, as the Sun, uh, sun described it. Well but he's, he's backed up against the wall, and look, this is a last throw of the dice because if. You look, he, he was so adamant that Boris Johnson had to go that if he does get a fine, he has to go anyway. So he might as well spend the next but, six but weeks Harry, being able to play politics. But, say, but, but Harry, I would say that both yourself and also the Daily Mail has tried to draw this false equivalence between what I was happening... Made, I haven't made... I don't think I have. And what, was happening, ..and what was happening in Durham. What was happening in Downing Street was systematic, organised parties during the deepest, darkest parts of lockdown. The Prime Minister then pretended he wasn't even there. There was a recording of his staff laughing and joking about the parties. That's a very, very different situation than what you're seeing uh, happening around the Durham situation. Just to come back on that, I don't think I've, I've, I've been making that equivalence at all. I think you've actually, you've taken Keir Starmer at his own bar, at his own rules. He's the one that sets this new standard of morality in public life and held that mirror up to himself. If anyone's drawing equivalence, it's him. OK. I, I want to tell you where the public actually is on all this. You've both been quoting the public extensively. Uh, YouGov have polled them, which is rather helpful to us. Uh, and we can show you that poll now. 46% believe Keir Starmer should resign. 36, 32% think he should stay. 57% think Boris Johnson <laughs> should resign. 29% think uh, he should say. I mean, who knows why the difference that is? It could possibly be the Boris Johnson in charge and made the rules and Keir Starmer didn't. But anyway, there we go. Kate, Anna Bolton, uh, an esteemed former political journalist himself, and a panel member on the panel on Friday when this great uh, police investigation first emerged, made the point that the Tories need to be slightly careful what they wish for. And, and potentially, Keir Starmer going, because he's maybe not hugely popular with the country, might actually be do the Tories some significant damage. Well, look, I think we all know that Adam Bolton's brain is a thing to behold. <laughs> is the reality of the situation that politicians sit round in Westminster with a lot of time on their hands, planning out what would happen if Keir Starmer left and potentially if West Streeting took over, and would that be bad for Boris Johnson or would it be better for Rishi Sunak to take that on? Look, I think that is not what's happening here. 
The really big question at the end of the day is, does Keir Starmer come out of this situation better, having said what he's said today? I think on a personal level for him, he will think he has because he felt deeply uncomfortable about, you know, as a man who's made his reputation on integrity and upholding the law, mm. to have that questioned, I think, really fundamentally undermined his position as a politician. And actually, even if he came out of it unscathed, would be problematic for him. So that's, I can see why he's got to where he's got to today. The problem for me is once you start talking about resignation and offering your resignation, generally the public don't really like that and it doesn't necessarily work out very well for you. So long term we'll see. I mean, the question is, does he get a fine? OK, he... I, I just want to move on from this one because this is... <laughs> We're going to come back to this one, I suggest. <laughs> but Anna, just a quick one for you finally. Yep. Uh, there could be a Labour leadership contest quite soon. Uh, Angela Rayner might have to go as well if she's fined. Now, Lisa Nowdy has refused to rule herself out of playing a part in that. Would you run for Labour leader in that contest? I think there's one massive barrier to that in that you have to be a member of the UK Parliament. Yeah, you get got elected. A job here to do, uh, in get Scotland. A as you can see, I've got, for the first time in almost 10 years, a smile on my face here as Scottish Labour. We're off All right. the canvas back on our feet and fighting for first That's place. Not a <laughs> to be clear, are you ruling yourself out of the next Labour leadership contest if Keir Summer has to resign? I'm not a member of parliament. I can't oh, even rule myself in, even if I wanted to. Do. So absolutely, <laughs> uh, I think that's uh, excitement on a different scale, Tom, perhaps. Uh, <laughs> okay. Wishful thinking on your part. All right.